Hey everyone, welcome back. This is part nine of this series and it's part two of us looking at the data schema. Now, since the last part, I've had a little bit of feedback and this SAS account is causing a little bit of confusion reading, reading between the lines anyway. And what I tend to find is that, that people are getting it a little bit better if I actually just rename this as subscription. Right, so SAS plan is fine, but what we can do on all of these is just change these to subscription. Okay, now in the live app that I'm building, I'm I'm keeping it as it is, but, but just purely for explanation purposes, I just want to make sure that there's no confusion about what the SAS account is, is that it is a subscription record. So basically, the subscription is for you, essentially, as the developer and the publisher of the app and that is a list of your subscribers okay but it's also the anchor around the way that all of the privacy rules are set up to make sure that when the user who is assigned to a subscription they log in that that ensures then that all of the other data types all of your inventory and all the transactions and everything else that you've got in there that we yet to define are all linked to a specific subscription so that only that subscriptions data is ever shown to users of that subscription. So, before we go into any other types, I just wanted to cover one aspect of this organization because one thing that you may want to do or that the end user may want to do is they may have multiple organizations but they may not want every single user to have access to every organization. Okay, so we'll add a new field and we're gonna call this one users. And again, it's going to be a list of user. Now, I don't really like to use lists too much, but when you know that the data is quite small, the amount of data that you're going to contain in a list is quite small, and they are acceptable, which is why the number of users, there's only good, there's not, never going to be too many. And in defining privacy rules, having the users as a list, as in we've got admins up here, really does help. So... This field here uses is a list of users and effectively what's in that list of users is the users who are allowed access to this organization. So what we can do then, we can add an additional condition to this privacy rule and we can say that this organization's SAS account is a current user SAS account. So we make sure that we're only including the organizations that belong to the, the subscription. I suppose I should change that to subscription as well, shouldn't I really? If we're gonna do this. Okay, less, less of a tongue twister as well. And what we can do is to say this organization subscription is current users subscription and what we can do then is to say that this organizations uh, organizations users contains current user okay so when the user logs in we get assigned a SAS account the privacy rules that then kicks in to make sure that the only organizations that you see are the ones that belong to the same subscription that the users assigned to but then with this extra condition now, it also makes sure that if the user doesn't have access to, to any organization in there, then they won't get that included as an option. So if you can imagine at some point you're going to have a pop up where the user can select which organization to use, whether that's at login or through an option in the app. And that list of use, that list of organizations then will, will be limited via this condition on the privacy rule to just the ones that they are allowed to see. So. At some point we have to include a mechanism whereby users can where this gets populated so by default then the way that this would work is by default unless we put the list of users in that no other user will be allowed access to to the organization so probably at the point of creating an organization whichever user is logged in and creates that probably they will be the only user that's added and then they can separately select which users have access to the organization. Of course, you could have that as part of the input form for a new organization on there as well. Right, so let's look at our other data types. That's our high-level stuff. Let's look at our 
central data types. So let's start off with our customer. So what you could do is to say, well, what I'm going to do, I'm going to have a table. I'm going to call that customer. Okay, and then I'm going to have another one, and I'm going to call that supplier. Okay, sorry, the mouse is jumping about there. You could have that called supplier. Okay, and then this contains your supplier, and this contains your your customer, supplier or vendor, depending which way you want to call it. Okay, and they would each have their own fields and everything. The trouble is, they're mostly going to have the same fields. So why not instead have one central table, one central type that stores both customer and supplier and then have a type on there that determines whether it is a customer or a supplier or maybe both. So I will get rid of this one and let's just spread that out there a little bit. And what I call these, I call them business entity. Okay, and that contains both customers and suppliers in one table. So we'll give that a name, as I always do, and we obviously need a type field that will determine what that's going to be. So because it's a straight static list of a customer and a supplier, I'm going to have an option set. So let's do what we did previously. Well, we've just got a list here. And we will just call that underscore, and rather than call it business entity types, I'm just going to call it BE type for short. Okay, and make sure everything's in view properly. Okay, and the options within that, and remember that I'm only I'm only displaying here the display attribute. I'm not listing these as fields. As I've done with the data types, these are option sets. So I'm treating these differently. So I'm just giving the, the actual list of options. So they will be customer and it will be supplier. And so on here, then the, the type of the type is going to be underscore BE type. Now, what we can do here because there's the potential that a customer can also be a supplier. What we could do here is actually have this as a list. Okay, now there's only two options, a customer or a supplier, but the type could then contain a customer and the supplier. And so we can check for that when we're doing our searches. So I'm gonna have that as a list. So we've got one central record for a, for a business entity that could be a customer and a supplier or one or the other. So again, I'm not going to define too many fields here. I'm just focused on the types and the relationships between the types. I'm just going to shift these over a little bit just so that we can fit everything on the on the screen. Okay, so move this down as well. Okay, so one of the things that I want to do with this is I want each business entity, each customer or supplier to have multiple addresses and unlimited addresses okay and I also want them to have multiple contacts and unlimited contacts right so let's have a look at that now before we just do that one thing I just wanted to do on here is as we said before everything's got to be linked to a I was about to say SAS account I've changed it to a subscription now haven't I so everything is linked to a subscription okay and it's also linked now to an org because each each business entity, each customer has to belong to an organization. Now, if you didn't want to break them down like that, so for example, let's say a customer or supplier record or whatever could belong to multiple organizations, then you could have, again, have this as a list and then just check for does it contain. Okay, but we're not going to do that in this case. I'm actually just going to have a straight org and that's going to be organization organization and I suppose I should start drawing some lines okay I'll pop that one in there because it's getting a little bit crowded uh, the subscription is obviously going to link to subscription uh, pull that over there so it's pretty 
bit more obvious okay uh, and obviously the business entity type can be linked to this over here so we're starting to get our relationship sorted out there so like I say I want a facility to be able to add multiple addresses on on the for each business entity so let's drop another table and sorry if I use terms like table and data type interchangeably table is kind of what we would call it in traditional databases bubble tends to stick with data type okay but they, they can be used interchangeably so I'm going to call this one is I'm going to call it address okay and the first thing it needs to be linked to the business entity each address has to belong to a business entity so what I will do I'll call it BE for brevity and uh, I will it's then of type business entity okay and again let's create a relationship between the two okay and we can add the usual field so we can sort of put a address we can have that all in one field we can also have a field for geolocation because bubble supports that type so that we could we, we could have a map and sort of zoom in and have all of our uh, location points of all the addresses for a particular customer or whatever uh, on there okay we'll just stick with the address type there for now again we can flesh out the fields let's build the relationships first let's drag the, the last two uh, get the last two okay and also as i say i'll keep moving this privacy rule out of the way we need to do something with it but let's just copy this and this is going to be a type contact well it's, it's a type called contact okay and again it's going to be linked to the business entity and we won't have an address we kind of have first name which is a text and wow well, my mouse is playing me up at the minute so text okay and again that's going to be linked <coughs> to a business entity so let's draw that in there okay and let's just pull out a little bit so what I'm not going to do is on the business entity I'm not going to have an addresses field which is a list of addresses and I'm not going to have a contact field with a list of contacts because the amount of data that could be stored is unknown with that one and again we go back a little bit to performance that we were talking about earlier on and where you're going to store lists of data within your types there's a few setbacks to that performance even on small lists there's no real benefit bubble admit this is no real performance benefit over that okay well for short lists, they do give you some uh, some benefit in terms of attaching privacy rules because you can use contains okay but for this one, it's very rare that I will include list fields on my types. So I'm not actually going to include lists on there. The link is this here. It's the BE. It's the business entity. So if I want to get a list of addresses for a business entity, I'm just going to query based on that. I'm not going to rely on a list. Okay, Lists are difficult to query on. And the thing with the business entity, let's say that I've got a lot of addresses, a lot of contacts on there. Well, it doesn't drag all of the data down, it downloads all of the unique IDs down. So if you've got 100 contacts for every business entity that you download, you're going to get 100 contacts. It's much easier to say to Bubble, go and get me the all of the contacts for this or get me so many contacts for this. okay? Because once they're in a list, I can't query. What I've got to do is download them and then filter them client side. Where if, I, if I've got them here with a link to the type, then I can just query that directly to say, okay, give me the contacts for this business entity for this condition and that condition, okay? So it, it's much more proficient and efficient for performance purposes not to have data in list fields unless you know that they're going to be quite small or that they're really going to benefit you in some other way, such as here and here, where I'm going to use those as part of privacy rules. Now, obviously, with these, I'm going to need to also like with every other type in the system let's just drag this one down now okay let's drag that down we're gonna have to 
again link it to a subscription every record of every type has to be linked to a subscription otherwise it all falls down and also it needs to be linked to an org oops so that each and every record in each and every type okay belongs to a subscription and then the privacy rules will kick in we're going to apply privacy rules to each one of these to make sure that only the records for a particular subscription get included but also because you've got organizations under the subscription umbrella then each record has to be attached to an organization and again you would use privacy rules not necessarily to secure that data but more as a kind of an automated constraint so that you don't have to worry about it once this is set this current org on the user to the org that they want to use then the privacy rule will kick in and deal with that so let's have a look at the privacy rules and just in case you're wondering why do we need to deal with privacy rules right now why are we talking about them at this stage and it's a common mistake that the people who are just starting with bubble just starting to get used to database it's like oh i'll apply the privacy rules at the end i'll do my data and i'll organize it get my app working and then i'll think about it it's important to understand that bubble's privacy rules are not like a panacea they're not they're not all they're not all flexible they do have certain limitations and a structure that needs to be followed so in in that case when you decide when you're defining your data sometimes you have to define your data schema around privacy rules most of the time you don't most of the time you can get your privacy rules to fit in with your data structure but on some edge cases it is required and if you notice here when i was talking about the admins and the users okay i've put those as lists and i've done that specifically for privacy rule purposes because I can put a simple contained rule within a privacy rule to make those work. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have them as lists. I don't tend to use list types for fields. I just don't because they, they, they can be cumbersome. So let's say, for example, on our business entity type, let's just do a privacy rule on there. And again, it's just, it's just going to follow this. It's going to be exactly the same as this that we've got for the organizations uh, with, with, with an extra condition in there. So we're going to say that this organization let's change it to this business entities okay and let's just for brevity let's just say be for now and this be is we want okay we don't have that so we, we can remove that condition we don't have that in this one so we can say this be subscription is a current user subscription so only business entities that belong to the same subscription that the current user is assigned to gets included and what we can do is to say this be is org is current users current org okay so what's going to happen then is that only the business entity that belongs to the subscription but also only the business entities that belong to the organization that they currently got in use which is pivoted around this the the current org field okay and and effectively that privacy rule can then be duplicated across addresses contacts and everything else that we're going to use in terms of making sure that they're separated out per subscription and per organization that they've got in use okay maybe other privacy rules that we want to put in there but these are the two that, that, that really do the job okay so we've gone quite long there so i'll stop that there i hope a lot of that makes sense if you've got any questions put them in the comments thanks for watching again thanks for sticking with me take it easy and i will see you in the next one